If you're a residential real estate agent earning $200,000 a year and you want to grow your passive income, this show's for you. Learn the secrets other agents use and hear from experts in our field in order to guide you along your journey to investing in assets like apartment communities so that you can turn your commissions into cash flow. I'm Randall DeCleared. Let's go, baby. All right, welcome back. We've got a great show for you today. Our guest is Dawn Keller. We discuss giving back. We discuss her uh, perseverance and overcoming hardships and how she scaled and how she, uh, her, her experience in the multifamily space, going from investing passively uh, while working a W-2 job and then ultimately getting onto the active side still while working a full-time W-2 job. So it's a great show and you're going to learn a lot. So stick through to the end. And without further ado, let's bring on Don. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you here today. Um, why don't you just kick us off and tell us kind of how you got started in real estate and read a little bit about your bio and your background. How did you make that transition? And just tell me where you are in the space. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much, Randall. I am honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah. Like I, I just love to share a little bit about my story. Um, and, and like Randall said, just how I got here and what I'm doing. I believe there's a lot of people out there like me that genuinely want to change something about their life or their career or their financial situation and just don't know how. They just don't know where to begin. And that was me. So by sharing my story, um, my hope really is that I can help others. Um, so my name is Dawn Keller, as Randall mentioned. Um, I'm a real estate investor, specifically in the multifamily space. So now I'm a multifamily apartment syndicator. And I also have a full-time W-2 job where I work with casinos to help them uh, run promotions for their players. So nothing to do with real estate whatsoever. Um, so definitely working two jobs, um, but it's t- it's doable. I'm happy to share more about that of just how I manage my time and in that challenge. There's a lot of challenges that come with that. Um, but I live in the Dallas area with my husband, Jason, and our sweet little pit mix that we adopted during COVID. It's our little COVID baby. Um, but I got into apartment investing in 2019 and I started passively investing first. And so I didn't really have time to be more hands on, but I wanted to put my money to work. And then actually during COVID, really, that gave me an opportunity to get more actively involved. And um, since I wasn't as busy on my W-2 job, and uh, that allowed me to transition into a general partner role where I'm active in finding deals, working with brokers and negotiating the deals, um, overseeing the business plan of these properties. And uh, But the, my favorite part really is helping with education, people that are just wanting to get into the space, or I work with a lot of uh, physicians and uh, attorneys that they want to put their money to work. I think that there's a lot of people that understand the value. They want to invest in real estate, but they just don't know how. They don't know how or where to get started. So this is an easy way uh, for investors to um, put their money to work and co-own apartment buildings, apartment complexes, like and really um, and invest that way where they don't have to do a lot of the legwork. We do the legwork for them. Um, so it really works out well. But just you know, a little bit about how I kind of grew up. I, I'm originally from Chicago, I, I, but I've lived in Texas since I was 10 years old. So it's definitely home for me. Um, but I didn't grow up with a lot, uh, to be honest. Um, my parents divorced when I was two years old. And there was a period of time before my mom remarried, before she married my stepdad. There were several years where my mom was working two jobs, um, raising three kids. And um, I learned a lot from that, from watching her and just f- in figuring it out. Sometimes we just don't know how we're going to get through a situation at, or, or get through a hard time and nobody's going to do it for you. And you just have to figure it out. And I think that's really shaped my beliefs and who I am. It's carried throughout my life of just making me independent and just, um, and picking myself up in those hard times. There's always challenging times in our life. Right. And that has really, that's really helped me throughout my life. But I grew up in an era, I guess, where we were really taught to work hard and save your money, right? Just save. And like, you know, that's what I was taught is um, I didn't know anything else. It was, you know, I, I went to college. I, I was only the second person in my, my entire family to, to go to college. And my sister was the first. And 
And then I got the good job. I got the well-paying job and that was great. I started saving my money, became a really good saver. I put it all in a 401k and that's not working out for me right now. My 401k, I think was down 30% last year. It's uh, painful. Um, and I just thought like, gosh, there's gotta be a better way to do this. You know, we work so hard for our money. There's gotta be a better way to, to make our money work for us. And flash forward to today, my parents are now in their seventies. Um, my mom's going to be 70 this year. My dad's in his seventies and um, they're both still working. And I hate that for them. And I don't want them to have to work. And I honestly, I don't want that for myself either. I, I don't want to work until I'm 70. Yeah. And that's a reality that a lot of people are facing these days. Um, I just talked with a gentleman a couple of weeks ago who is a surgeon, makes it very, very good money. And he, I think he's 56. And he said, Don, I thought honestly, by 55 to 60, I'd be able to retire. And he said, that's just not the case. And now he's looking for a way, you know, he's like me and looking for something like, how can I put my money to work? Right. Um, so I like sharing that with other people. Just, you know, I didn't know that this existed multifamily investing. I didn't even know that that existed just a few short years ago. And so I like sharing it with others and, uh, you know, helping them to, to grow. To me, it was more about creating a life that is, it's not just about money. Right. I think that's what, when people think of like success, it's not about money. It's about what money allows you to do. And it's really, I think when it comes down to it is about time and being able to, it's time to do the things that are really important to you in life. And that's what multifamily has afforded me now. And that's, yeah. that's why I got into a space. Yeah. Yeah. I think that really happened for a lot of people. It was forced on them during COVID. And so, yeah, if you didn't know, now you know. You're like, oh, wow, I don't want to do this. I don't want to live this way. Um, so it's given a lot of perspective for some people, but it sounds like you had this prior to. So kind of how did you get into the real estate side? Why was real estate a thing that you wanted to get into if you had a W-2 and you were making decent money, saving money, presumably, mm -hmm. right? Because that was what was hammered into you. So mm -hmm. what was your for first foray into real estate? You buy single family houses? Did you just, it, you signed up for a group? Like what'd you do? Yep. I, yep. I was probably watching too much HGTV and did a single family flip. I was like, well, that seems, you know, that seems yeah. easy, right? There's nothing easy about that. Yeah. Anyone who's done it. Um, but yes, that's what I did. I did a single family flip. It was very profitable, but it wasn't what I was looking for. Immediately. I thought, how am I going to scale this? How am I going to scale this into something bigger? I was looking for something that I could grow my money exponentially and not just a process of flipping and flipping it, you know, over and over again. I remember I used to live in Uptown for any, anyone in the Dallas area. I used to live in Uptown and I remember driving to work in the morning and it was like every patch of grass that you could find developers were building apartments. And I just remember thinking like, gosh, like who is doing this and how do I get in on it? Like there's money in in here. And like, I want to put my money into real estate that's going to grow into something bigger. Um, That's really what attracted me to real estate in the first place. And I looked at a lot of different asset classes, actually. I was going to buy laundromat. Very, they cash flow very well and uh, car washes. And But multifamily really just checked all the boxes for me as far as the appreciation, putting your money into something that's going to grow in value, increase in value and the scalability, being able to buy something bigger Bigger. So we're doing syndications, right? That are essentially a syndication. It's just people partnering to pool their money together to buy a larger asset, right? Yeah. So instead of buying my single family home that I flipped was $160,000, now I'm buying 10, 20, $30 million apartments and that we can buy and then and scale that way. And um, has great tax benefits that I didn't even know that was, you know, they're amazing tax benefits. So really it just checked all the boxes for me. And that's what got me kind of started in that space and really just got me the momentum to keep going. Sure. What what year was that? When did you start doing that? So 2019 is really when I got involved. Okay. Um, I did my first investment in 2020, which you would think would be a bad year to do it, but actually it was yeah. a great time to invest. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like when everyone's running the other way and, you know, is, is scared, sometimes those are the best opportunities. Yeah. I mean, we're moving into that now uh, as well, I would say. Yep. So we're proud to be sponsored by Ridgeline Investment Group. Ridgeline has a track record of transacting more than 53 million in assets throughout Texas. Ridgeline is currently looking to acquire 100 to 200 unit class B multifamily communities between five and 20 million in San Antonio, Temple, Waco, Tyler, and other Texas secondary markets. To learn more about Ridgeline Investment Group, visit www.ridgelineig.com. Okay. Well, there's, there's a lot in that story. I really want to go back to this 
casino promo. Like, tell me what's going on. What do you do? You, you explain that to me. I know it's such a funny business. Um, so it's kind of like insurance in a way. So again, I, I work in the, with casino side, but we do, our company does more than that. We do really started in sports. So think of like, maybe like a golf a hole in one. If you hit a hole in one on hole number nine, you win a car. Yeah. It's we underwrite those types of prices or like yeah. say it's at a basketball game and AT&T is doing a promotion and they pull somebody from the stands and you try to make a half court shot to win $50,000. Yeah. Um, those are usually insured prizes. There, there's yeah. a company behind the scenes that is like covering Lloyd's. those. And yeah, Lloyd's is, <laughs> so we're reinsured. And so, yeah. And yeah. so Lloyd's and yeah, Swiss Re and all the big guys. And so we're kind of a middleman and uh, we, you know, we definitely stay behind the scenes. And for casinos, we do more game show type stuff. So it might be, these big wheel spins, it, look, it kind of looks like a price is right wheel. Like yeah. come spin the big wheel for your chance to win a million dollars or a scratch card for your chance to win a half a million dollars, something like that. So yeah. it's fun. It's yeah, great. Yeah. I mean, it's been a great, I'm so grateful for my W2 job. It's afforded me a lot of opportunities. It's just not my forever. Cause like you know, we talked about briefly, we touched on that. There's more to life. I think than I don't think, you know, I feel like we were all created for something bigger and we're not designed just to clock in and clock out and just count down the days till the weekend. There's so much more to it. And that's what really motivated me into, into wanting into getting into a different career that gives me the flexibility where I have a choice. I can choose when I work and how I work and where I work and making time for those things that's important to me. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's the beauty of Cash flow. That's why. Yes. Oh gosh. Cash yeah. flow and the passive free cash flow. That is not just cash flow that goes <laughs> to something. Okay. So you also mentioned something about educate. So I wanted to touch on that. What is your favorite way that you educate your either your partners that come in on deals with you? Because that's I assume that's what you were talking about. You like to educate in this space. So is it just one on one conversations? Do you do other things? Like what do you what do you do? Yeah, great. Um, I host a meetup that um, has 3,400 members right now, and that's local here in Dallas. Um, so I'll hold in-person meetings and you know just have different topics and speakers. And it really kind of talks to everyone from people just getting started that want to learn about how to create a passive, passive income, and even to those that want to get into buying um, their own properties. And this a lot of times it's single family, people that have invested in single family and kind of like me, we're looking for something like to grow and to grow, to grow exponentially. And then I also host webinars online. And um, that has been great. I've made a lot of connections and um, just through mutual people that I know, you know, through LinkedIn or other areas that you just connect with by joining some joining different groups that have similar interests. And then I'll host webinars. So you're like 30 minute webinars. And it's just kind of, a, again, sharing my story of and, and how it works. Like, what are we doing? I think yeah. this is, it was so foreign to me when I first started just a few years ago, I didn't even know this was an option. And I feel like um, there's a lot of people out there that are looking for ways to diversify their investments and just looking for other, especially gosh, now in the stock market has been so volatile these past few years. And I think a lot of people that I've talked with are, are, you know, they're tired of it. They, they want to look in something else. Like, what are my other options? And syndications in apartments weren't, that wasn't an option not that long ago. You know, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, maybe they were all, it was all institutional. And now it's, um, this has become an, an option, an option for people like you and me to invest and buy apartment buildings. That's make it, that makes it um, a real tangible for us to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Set it up again, just to overview. I, I talk about this a bit on the channel, but like a syndication is a pool, a capital, a lot of investors get in. The bank is typically the biggest investor unless you're paying all cash. Uh, but then it gives the opportunity for limited partners to invest without having to do any of the work and they can put in 25 to a hundred thousand or more. Right. So it's smaller check sizes. So you can get in on investments that you otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to see because you have operators like us who go out and buy these things. So just a quick highlight and recap on what a syndication is. So yeah, quick absolutely. question. Yeah. I, I, as, I was going to add to that. Just like, yeah, it's, it, you know, it works out great. I, like I said, I work with some physicians and, and attorneys that that's exactly what they're looking for is yeah. um, they have the funds and they, they want to, they're looking for something else and buying real estate. I think people really genuinely understand the value of investing in real estate. It's just the how it's the how or where. And so this is a great solution for them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, a lot of agents listen to the show. So what advice would you have for them if they have not ever actually invested? You know, if you teach a lot and you you come across. So this is what I find. I find a lot of agents get into the space. 
they like real estate. They know that is valuable. They know that it can create some sort of passive income, but then they end up getting stuck either in single family or they get stuck in never investing, just just the brokerage service side of the business, earning active income. And so do you have any advice to them to get them off of their hands and actually start investing? <laughs> Yeah, gosh, I think it's all about action, right? You can get stuck in that analysis paralysis and and not knowing where where to go. And I think I definitely think you know there's a lot of education out there, right, that you can find online or but you know podcasts and things that can really help you get started. I think it's about meeting people too. For me, that was a big thing just going to events. One of the first events that I went to, actually, I did join a mentorship program. I think you asked me about that earlier and I didn't answer that question. Um, I did join a mentorship program and that was huge for me. And it wasn't even about the the program itself. I think it was about the people that I met that weekend at this event where um, these are just genuine people, just normal people, normal people like you and me. And, but they genuinely want to help and, and really help you get started and will kind of help you point, point you in the right direction. And that's what so many people help me along the way get started. And that's why I like to help others too. This is definitely a, um, you know, team sport. I, I have found I'm, t- I'm kind of the person that likes to do it myself. If you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. That's not really true. I mean, it really, you can partner with so many people to really gr- go so much much further and faster. Um, so I would encourage, you know, just, you know, I would attend, I would attend events. I think meetups um, and events and just making those connections with people, I think can really help you get connected with who you identify with. Find people that just really speak to you, speak to your heart, that have done the thing that you want to do. And And model them, you know, whether that's investing with them or, you know, helping, you know, to get your own career, so your own investment started on your own, if you want to, you know, buy your own uh, duplexes or or multifamily or however you want to get started. But I think modeling, modeling someone else, you know, there's, we don't live in a bubble, you know, you might as well take advantage of the people that you know, and that can connect connect you with other people and help you get started. Um, Was it... uh, Tony Robbins that said like success leaves clues. And so it's like, you know, follow that, use the mentors that you have in your life and the, and the success models that you've seen other people have success with and, um, and follow them. Yeah. And take action hundred percent. Take action. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. That's huge too. Can we Ready, touch on that for a minute? Aim. Is that what's that? Yeah. Can we touch on that for a second? For I sure. think Go action is like, oh my gosh. Um, Yeah, I have. So like I said, I, you know, like helping people when they're first getting started. And I've had a lot of people were maybe at a conference that are 300, 400 people and they're looking around the room and they're, they ask me like, Dawn, like, how am I going to compete with all these people trying to find the right connections and getting started? And, and I I tell them, you're not you're not going to compete with, you're not competing with because 90% of this room is not going to do anything. They're super excited right now. They're super pumped. It's a great conference, but come Monday, they're not going to do anything. And that's the truth is like, it's because Monday's hard, right? When Monday rolls around, life is busy and we all have commitments and it is, and that can be challenging, but taking that action, just taking one step, just doing something you're going to beat out 90% of everyone else because they're not going to do anything about it. And I also like to say this too, there's people that talk about massive action. And I think that's great. You do have to take massive action. But I feel like I like to say consistent action because I feel like in massive action, sometimes there's a disconnect. It's like a New Year's resolution, right? Where you make a New Year's resolution you don't, you barely get out of January. Most people, you know, they don't make the whole year, let alone the month of January and they, and they quit because I think there's this disconnect and they can't see how to get from point A to point B um, because it's a massive shift. But if you take consistent action, that is what moves the needle. And, and you know, the truth is results don't happen annually. Results don't happen monthly. Results really happen daily. And so if you take that daily consistent action, I don't care what it is, but just something that's going to help you move the needle every single day, uh, you'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about it a lot. KPIs, key performance indicators, and you can break down these massive goals into really actionable, like 90 day plans and then daily plans or weekly plans. So I was looking at mine this morning and it's just Underwrite 10 deals, do this, call this many LPs, do do all the little actions that are just daily activities that if you do them and you track them, you'd be surprised what you can accomplish over a long period of time. So great advice there. Yeah. Thanks. I, I, I 
makes me want to just get get up and run around for a minute. <laughs> do <something. laughs> just so, do something. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's let's talk about some of the deals that you've done, and let's talk about just real estate here. So right now, you know, what are you seeing in the market? And even before that, let's. Let, let, so how are you set up? Are you capital raising? Are you um, asset managing? Like where are you in the multifamily deal? Like where do you reside? Yeah, great question. So my very first deal um, is a $10 million property in Fort Worth. It's 91 units. And I three partners on that deal. And I played many roles. I would think I wanted to learn so much about it. So I was happy to play all the roles and be involved in every single, yeah, every single sure. part of it. The finding the deal, working with the brokers and uh, underwriting all of that. So I love that it taught me so, so much. And then working with my experienced partners that I was able to learn from them. Asset management, if I'm being honest, is is not my favorite. Um, so it's just um, I I used to and before I was um, in sales in my in my current W two I was a project manager and it's a little more IT based, but it was the hardest job I've ever had in my life. And uh, and and that was something. It's it's kind of, it's a little bit like asset management, and not my favorite. So I definitely like um, finding the deals. I, I even like underwriting. I'm kind of a closet nerd, so underwriting to me is like a it's like a puzzle. You know, you kind of just you know you just see like, oh, is this going to work out? What if we did this? And what about this plan? That to me is fun as well. Um, but I do also like the capital raise side. I like and to me, capital raising. Listen, I'm in sales in my W two. I am not a salesperson. I'm not the type of person that can sell ice to an Eskimo. I'm not a salesperson at all. I'm a terrible salesperson, but I'm very successful at it. And the reason that I'm successful at it is because sales to me is just finding the right fit. It's connecting a problem with a solution. And that's what I do for my clients in the casino business is if I can find a solution for them that works for them, they are going to be a client for life. And that's all I did. That's To me, that's not selling. I'm just helping them. Sure. And... Capital raising, you can call it capital raising, whatever you want to call it. It's to me, it's the same thing. I'm not selling you anything. There are a lot of people out there that are just like me that were looking for something to put their money to work. And I'm just providing a, an opportunity. And this is like, if this, if it works for you, great. If it's not your thing, that's fine too. It's great. But I have found a lot of people that have really been drawn to the multifamily investing business because it's like, oh my gosh, like that's exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for a way to invest in real estate and grow my money instead of letting just letting it sit there. And that to me, that's a win-win. You know, I found a solution for somebody and I'm just sharing my experience with with others that are in the same position as, 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 as I was. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's the, I, I found all the sales that I've always ever done. I used to sell Cutco knives. I've done sales for a long, long time. <laughs> um, yeah. The conversations are the, you know, that's my style. I would rather have a conversation with somebody and just make sure that it's a fit. And that isn't really sales. It's really just like, yeah, it doesn't make sense or not. So exactly. yeah, it sounds like the same, but then you get the hard charging sales guys who go out and they crush it as well, but to each yeah, it's own. just a different philosophy, a different, yeah. a different method. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, okay. So you're, you you have done some of the asset management side. You got any nightmares you want to share with us? You got any like uh, horror stories? Plumbing. Or, or... <laughs> <laughs> plumbing. <laughs> yeah. Plumbing is a nightmare. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah so we were in uh we do, you know, value add properties. So we're you know, buying like 70s, 80s, built in the 70s and 80s and and then you know and fixing them up. And yes, plumbing is a the plumbing is not the same as it is today, but owning a 70s property. It seems like you're sometimes we're playing whack-a-mole on that property. It just you're constantly repairing uh, these slab leaks, these plumbing leaks. It's just old plumbing. Um, so that's been that would be my my number one thing. And so I like what, 80s properties a little bit better. Say, there. What What did you learn from that though? If it was one yeah. asset that that's happened on, was it? Did you guys scope the pipes? Did you? It was. Uh, what we, happened there? We did, yes, we we did, and uh, did the hydro jetting and and all of that. So, but you know, sometimes there's nothing you can do when yeah. it's just when it's old plumbing. It's going to yeah. happen, right? Yeah, it's sure. just it's just old plumbing. So nothing nothing we could have done on that. But uh, definitely something to keep in mind. And I don't like chillers. I've learned that as well. They're very very expensive. Yeah. Um, so these are you know you you know you learn things about and and don't be wrong. Like I haven't done a 60s property, but I a lot of my colleagues have have worked with properties both in the 60s and have done very. Very, very well with them. It's just, um, you know, you got to be prepared for that. You got to have the budget for it. Make sure that you're, yeah. you're, you've got, you're prepared for those things. Yeah, that's all. I'm big on location is my biggest thing. It, it can be an older property, but if it's in a good neighborhood, that to me is a, is a win. That's a good find. 
Yeah. yeah. Are, are you only doing stuff in the Dallas uh, market? Are you around Texas? Where are you focused mainly? Just, yeah, DFW right now. I've been in okay. the area um, since, I gosh, like 30, some, 30 something years. So I mean, it's, it's definitely, I, I know the area really well. I'm not opposed to investing in other areas. Nashville's definitely on my radar and some parts of Florida. You know, there's definitely, as we all know, there's a shift, a, a sunbelt shift happening. And you, know, you got to follow those those migration patterns. And DFW right now, though, is still, it's still on fire. There's still, people ask me that too. Like, you know, Don is now a good time to invest with just, are we paying us at the top of the market? And there's so many things that we look at though. I'm still very bullish on DFW. Just the the growth potential that we still have here. There's still a lot of room to grow. You factor then with the now the housing shortage that we, the experts are saying that it's going to be a decade before we catch up with the housing shortage, and that's just gonna that's gonna put people into apartments. Um, so there's a lot of factors that we look into, but definitely I still um, I, I'm in DFW, love the area, know it well, and so I, I like to look at those little pockets that um, that I'm familiar with that I know are good good areas. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so. Uh... So in Dallas, yeah, I've, I've been looking at a number of, of deals up there uh, recently. And it just, I mean, there's so much more there than there is in like San Antonio right now available. But still, what are you seeing in the market then right now? You guys getting enough to underwrite? Have sellers pulled back and you're seeing your deal flow short, slow down? Or what, what are you seeing up there? Definitely this this past year has been a lot slower. Yes. Um, the beginning of a year ago, at the beginning of 2022, it was a buying frenzy, right? I mean, people were overbidding on properties and we were getting outbid. I think that was probably a blessing in disguise now that we did not win some of those properties that we were bidding on because I do think that they were probably overpriced at the time. So we're seeing prices come down. But with that, you also, you know, you deal with interest rates. But that the financing has changed as well. So if you can still get some good debt, and we are getting a debt, we closed on a property in October um, that was a, a 10 year fixed rate. It's a Freddie loan. Um, and we got it sub 5%. I think it was like 4.8 something. So great. You know, that's a really good interest rate right that now. Is, yeah. Um, for 10 years. And that that 10 year fix that allows that gives us lots of options, right? So we could um, we could if two years from now, if rates come down, we can refi um, into a better rate. Uh, if rates don't come down, if they continue to rise and we're ready to sell the property, we could do uh, we could do an assumption, a loan assumption to the next buyer, right? Yeah. And so maybe they get a better rate. They can acquire a 4.8 rate if interest rates are, you know, seven or whatever. Um, so there's lots of good options there. So, you know, we're still able to make it work. And as long as the, the numbers work, we're, we're good. And we're still seeing a lot of growth. The, you know, the rent, the rent growth has maybe slowed a little, but really not much. Um, I've got a property in Fort Worth that is, is still, I think it's 96% occupied. Most of our uh, residents renew at the at the new market rate. Um, there's just, you know, there's not a lot of options for, for them to go. It's just very competitive. You know, they're seeing rents rise everywhere. And it, we are changed the property. I was just out there a couple of months ago it was for Thanksgiving. We did a Thanksgiving uh, thank you, you know, welcome uh, thing, uh, Thanksgiving event for them. And I heard firsthand from some of the residents that said that they're like, we can see a huge difference in how you've cared for the property and just the improvements of, I mean, one lady told me just hot water. She's like, one time we were before you guys uh, on the property, we were out of hot water for like three weeks. I'm like that's just unacceptable. Um, so just, you know, if we're, we're changing these properties and making it better for residents too, and making it a place where they want to live. And then they'll stay. They're happy. You know, we want them to stay. And so that's huge. So most of our, most of our residents, I mean, 90% of our residents renew their leases. And that, that's huge. That speaks volumes to, to that we're able to create a better community and living yeah, for environment sure. for them. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's great. So what are the main things you guys are doing right now for, for value add? Are you guys doing, is it, is it mainly for this deal you bought in October? Is it a heavy lift? Is it a, a easy rehab? Is it just, it's not like a full reposition. Like what do you, what was that asset? Yeah, it was. Yeah, nothing distressed. Uh, we're okay. still we're buying we're buying pretty stable properties, yeah, you, especially you to get to, especially to get agency. Yeah, yeah to get yeah. An agency loan. So it was already very highly occupied, and you know ninety plus percent occupied. Um, so more of a light lift, but the, we do look for you know what kind of um, like you said the value adds covered parking um, on this particular mm -hmm. property. A lot of the units this one's built in the eighties, and a lot of the units do not have washer and dryer connections in the unit, and so we're adding those and being yeah. able to add those. And that's huge to have washer and dryer, and then renting the washer and dryer machines, and yeah. that's that's income generated there. And uh, we do we're doing some bulk Wi-Fi um, packages, and that can be very profitable. We're getting 
a discounted, what we'll do is buy a from the provider, we'll buy a, a bulk package for the whole property. And by doing so, we get a largely discounted rate. And then and then the residents are also getting a discounted rate. Even though we're making some income there, they still are getting a lower rate than what they would be able to get if they were to go buy Wi-Fi on their own and, yeah, and cable. Sure. We'll do sometimes a Wi-Fi cable package. Yeah. yeah so yeah. It, it works out works out for them as well. Yeah. yeah. And then just regular uh, on your turns, are you guys having to yep. do any renovations? Yeah. The interiors yeah. doing, you know, the vinyl wood flooring and new okay. new cabinets and, and countertops and depending on the area, um, either re- resurfacing or doing granite, depending on, but depending on that location and the area. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Just doing yeah renovations as they turn. And yeah, I just yeah. didn't know if you were actually going to spend those CapEx dollars on the renos or if you were just getting market rents based on your traditional, just regular turnover. Um, you know, both, honestly. I mean, yeah. yeah. So that, um, yeah, the other property I mentioned that we're not, you know, 90%, we're getting 90, 90% renewals. We're not touching those units. Yeah. And so those CapEx dollars are really being saved and will ultimately you know, be returned as a part of a, a, to the investors, right? Yeah. Is that that's money that we're not spending that we don't need. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. All right. So then you were talking about limited partners a minute ago. Is, is there like right now, I guess, in this environment, if you're still having conversations with them, like what's the number one question that people are asking you or, or either rebuttals maybe that you may be getting if you're, if you're presenting an opportunity, is there anything uh, that sticks out in your mind? Definitely. I would say, you know, the question is, is Don, is it now, is now a good time to invest? It's, um, and nobody has a crystal ball, right? So nobody knows, but we do watch the mark, the market indicators. And that's why we look for things like the population growth and, you know, in DFW and the employers that are moving here, um, and the housing shortage. We look at all those factors and that's why we're still very bullish on, on DFW. And, you know, the simple answer to that is typically what I'll ask them in return is, we, so our, our hold is, is we underwrite for five years, right? It's yeah. a, it's a five year hold. If we will, we can sell in less than that. It may not be quite five years, maybe three, or if we hit our projections sooner, we'll sell it or refi, but plan on a five year hold. But I typically ask them, you know, it's, and then we have runway, right? So on this property, we do a 10 year loan. If something catastrophic happens and we don't sell in five years, we can, we've got more room, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're protecting ourselves that way. And, but I kind of just ask them, like, do you think that this property is going to be worth more in five years or 10 years than it is today? Every single person says yes. Okay. So that's the, it's the value. If nothing else, real estate is an asset that appreciates over time. And history shows us that, you know, even in market downturn, downturns or during um, 2008, even in you know, 2008, DFW wasn't hit near as hard as the rest of the country because it was such a strong growth market. But regardless, yes, there's market downturns and dips, but history shows us that Real estate only goes one direction. It ultimately only goes one direction. Yeah. And if you're, yeah, invest over the long term. Yeah. Yeah. You'll win. So uh, it's interesting because I, when I was looking at some deals up there, it was difficult. It, it's just different. I mean, cap rates aside, just the the rent and the, I guess, cash on cash. So like, are you guys doing monthly, quarterly distributions? Like, how do you guys operate when you're doing that? And are you, are you, or the property that you just bought in October, how is that? This is more of a personal question. Like, Anybody listening can actually say, oh, this is how it works. Okay, great. But I'm just kind of curious how you guys are operating that and what kind of cash on cash returns or projections you guys have. If you can talk about it, I don't know what kind of deal it was, but we haven't even mentioned the deal. But some of these 506Bs, if you talk specifics, and this is for the listener, uh, you can't really talk deal specifics on those deals, but... Just no, I'm happy to, yeah. yeah, I'm happy to share that. Yes, it, it definitely depends on the property and the loan, right? So on the fixed rate loan, this property we bought in October, um, we d- we're seeing a lot le- a lot lighter cash flow. Our re- overall returns are, are still great, but we used to see cash flow at 8 to 10% annually, yeah. and now we're seeing like 4 to 5. Yeah. And that's because of interest rates, yeah. right? So definitely cash flow has been impacted. So if that's important to you, that's something to consider, right? For Is sure. um, But most people are, ha- I mean, most investors are happy with, they're getting something. It's 4 to 5%, and then they they understand the long-term, the five-year plan is that you'll get capital gains at the sale or the refi of the property. But yeah, definitely cash flow has been impacted. That one because it's a fixed rate loan, um, absolutely quarterly dividends, and that's that's the goal there. Um, but another property I have is a variable rate, and we have um, we have reassessed the dividends there of paying that out. And what we're doing is um, we've just put a pause on that for now because. We want us to see, we want to make sure we're being conservative. Yeah. You know, the first, the first priority in, in, in investing is to protect 
your money is to protect yeah. your wealth, right? That's the first capital for sure. That's right. That's yeah. the first step. Um, so that's what we're focusing right now and just keeping the, uh, the property um, highly occupied and performing well, um, but just being smart about it. And I think investors understand that they understand that this last 2022 was crazy. Just like how rapidly, I think that was like a, a, a record. If I read that correctly, is that how fast the interest rate, it was the, the, the rate hike. at which they, yes, sure. the fastest hikes ever. Yeah. And so I think a lot of people were just like, whoa, you know? And so for that reason, I think investors are very understandable about that. Like, Hey, we're going to, just let's be conservative for now, reevaluating all the time to see where we're at. And I think investors are fine with that. Like, let's stay on the conservative side. There's no reason to rush into this. Like we said, we have a long runway. We've got more time if we need it, but let's just, you know, let's play it safe right now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's even looking at it again, I talk about this, but just getting a return, getting your, your dollars invested rather than just sitting in the bank when inflation is as high as it is. It's like, you're getting, you're doing better, right? Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, well, if you think about that, yeah. Think about inflation. Um, what I think the average for last year for 2022 and fluctuate a little bit, I think the average was 8%, yeah. right? Is, is inflation. So if you think about that, if your money is just sitting on the sidelines, not doing anything, you're losing 8%. Yeah. You are losing 8% of your money. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is a fact. So yeah. just by putting your money into an investment, into real estate, um, where you're protecting your wealth and you're not losing 8% a year. And in fact, maybe, you know, getting, if you're cash flowing four to 5%, Hey, that's, you're doing pretty good right now. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's great. Sure. Yeah. I think it's just a matter of just like a lot of sellers, they've had to moderate their expectations on sale price. And will, I think, continue going forward for, I don't know, some time now. Investors, I mean, we everyone had so much money. Everyone was chasing yield. Everyone was pushing. So all the liquidity that was in the market was willing to go after and able to go after, I guess, the, the 8% double digit rent gross, that sort of thing. Uh, but now it's just like moderate your expectations and understand where we are in the cycle. It's still a good time to invest, get into the deals and just operate them properly. So... All right. So what is, uh, what's, what are you looking forward to in 2023? Getting close to the end here, but I want to just ask you a couple more bright spots. What are you looking forward to? Um, so, okay. I'll share a couple of things actually, if you don't mind. Um, sure. one, one thing, um, is that I was at a mastermind, uh, a year ago in January of 2022, where we were challenged to set, um, stretch goals. And so Stretch goal is something that, you know, kind of pushes you beyond what you think is possible, but kind of just opens your mind to what the possibilities out there. Right. And I just did my kind of like my personal year end review for 2022 and just, you know, what reflecting on what I accomplished and, you know, what I didn't. And I didn't hit a single one of those stretch goals. And you would think at first I thought, man, like that's a failure. Right. But to me, it wasn't what ended up happening is what I didn't realize at the time is that by focusing on those stretch goals, these massive goals, it pushed me to be on a different playing field. Yeah. It it really, it elevated my level of thinking. And I ended up actually having a, a very, very in successful, incredible year. So that really, even though it seemed at first, like I feel I was like, wait, no. And, I, and when I really reflected back on everything that I accomplished last year, um, it was really incredible. And that is one thing that I'm also looking for at 2023. I think sometimes as business people and entrepreneurs, we have this like long to-do list and we're always looking at like the next thing we have to do. And I'm guilty of rarely stopping to reflect on the wins and what I've accomplished, because those are the things that really keep you going. Those are the, those momentum, the momentum of having that just keeps you going. And so that's something that I am guilty of that I need to do a better job of, of taking the time to really pause and reflect on those things. And then also just from a personal level, you know, I got into multifamily investing to grow my financial, my, you know, my wealth and, and my finances, but it really has helped me grow so much personally. Um, this past year, I've challenged myself in ways that I never have before. And it has just, um, it's really also helped me prioritize what's important in life. Um, so I'm not only spending time with my, my loved ones and family, but I, I used to volunteer several years ago and then, and stopped because life got in the way. And I, I was like, man, I, you know, I just, I want to get back into doing something and, and really, you know, giving back to me is so important and, you know, how we can help just our, our society and our world and giving back in any way that we can. 
And I recently um, um, started a program with my my dog that I mentioned we adopted and my COVID dog, my COVID baby, uh, into a um, a therapy program where um, she can get certified. And we go together into nursing homes and hospitals where um, she can be a therapy, like a visitor dog. That's something that my dog and I would do together and, Very cool. and, and just do that yeah. visitation. So that is what we're working on right now is getting her certification. And that's been, um, it's just been a lot of fun. And it just gives me hope that I can bring a smile to someone's face and really just, um, and to help others. Yeah, that's great. My, so my sister runs sit, meet, sit and temple and she, in training all of her dogs, uh, that is one thing she trains them to do. And so she's been into, you know, she's been doing that for a while. She loves it. So I love um, that. Okay. I want to, I'd love to talk with her and connect with her and, and, and chat more. Yeah. Sounds good. I'll put you guys in touch. I mean, uh, yeah, that's, that's great. So, I mean, that kind of answered another question I was going to have, like how you like to give back. I was talking to you know Weiss uh, recently and he started talking about it and it wasn't a question that I normally ask people, but yeah, it just came up. So I'm glad you, you went down that road. So that's good. You got 2023, you got that set up. You're going to, how many units are you trying to take down this year? What do you, you got any goals there? I haven't set a number of units, but um, I'd like to do at least three, three, three deals this three year. Deals. And okay. yes, yeah. And still with my W2, that's, um, that's a lot. Solid. It's, it's challenge, yeah, challenging. Great. So, yeah. so three is good. Three, three is good. And yeah. I also like to take my time with it too. You know, I'm not, I don't want to jump into anything that, um, that doesn't make sense. So I like really take my time and, and make sure it's a good deal that I really like. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's been awesome having you on. I'm going to ask you some some wrap up questions, not related. So, what's your your favorite pastime, not related to real estate? Gosh, um, try traveling. I yeah. would say traveling. Yes, I love I love just going to different, different exploring different places. But I'm also a, like I think I mentioned I'm kind of a closet nerd. So I if, if I don't if <laughs> I like if to I travel, but I'm a nerd, so I can't if, leave. But my I'm house. also a nerd, and I so I like to I don't know like I read I do puzzles like logic puzzles, jigsaw puzzles. I mean I'm totally a nerd. Yeah. yeah, yeah awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, have, I don't know that you may answer this. What's the best thing or memory that's happened to you or your family in the last like 60 days or so? You travel anywhere? Fantastic. I have done some traveling, but one of my favorite memories would be just, um, this was right around Christmas time at the very beginning of December that I was scheduled to be at a real estate conference. It was a two day conference. And at the last minute, my, uh, my best friend who now lives in Atlanta, she used to live here in Dallas, lives in Atlanta and her son, um, my, his, my godson, he's four years old. They had made a quick trip to Dallas and, and it was that same weekend as my conference. And I went to the conference on Friday. I cut out a little bit early so I could spend the evening with them. And then I, Saturday morning, I woke up. They're staying at my house. And Saturday w- morning, I woke up and was supposed to head to the conference. And my heart wasn't in it. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't leave. I, you know, it's so rare that I get to see them. And my, my four year old godson, who he's just going to be little once. And I just, you know, and he's, he's so much fun. It's such a four is such a fun age and he's so funny. And, I, I couldn't do it. So I played hooky that day from the conference. It's a conference nice. I paid a lot of, paid a lot of money to, to go to. And I just gave game time decision. I was like, I'm not going. And yeah. I stayed home and we made brunch. My husband and I made brunch. My sister came over and we just hung out all day. And it was one of the best days of my life, honestly, just being surrounded by people that I love. And we just played games and just talked and laughed. It was a great day. And that, that to me is like, that's life, right? That's like, yeah, you know, we yeah. have to make some tough choices sometimes, but that's why, um, that's one of the things that multifamily investing has afforded me the opportunity to choose those things. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. I was going to say that's, that's the point. Like, right. You're working towards something. And if you give up those moments, then what is it for? Right. That's right. <laughs> so That's right. That's awesome. Good to hear. Um, Okay. And then last one, name one or two people who've been most influential to your success or the way you think. Gosh. Um, so I have to definitely, um, Brad Sumrock is a mentor to me. Um, he's now a personal friend of mine and that's the mentorship program that I, that I joined. He's, he's been instrumental in my growth. And then, you know, I'm also going to say probably, I mean, I have so many gosh, mentors and just people that inspire me. My sister, is one. And she's a, she's an RN. She's a nurse at children's hospital. She's in the ICU at children's hospital. And this woman deserves a gold medal. Any of these women who can work in an ICU with children and the trauma that they see 
it's, it's unbelievable what they face and to see her um, resiliency and how she's able to touch lives and help families go through a difficult time um, has nothing to do with multifamily, obviously, but it it is, it's life-changing to see that. And she has been such an inspiration to me and in resiliency and getting through difficult times that I've faced in my life. And, and just, um, she's just, she's a rock star and I admire her so much. All right. That's a good, solid shout out. Sis, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, again, want to thank you for coming on. It's great catching up with you. I'm going to put yeah. all your contact info down in the show notes so people can reach out to you if they want to go through direct. And uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. you. Yeah. I'd love to, I do have a, um, for any of your listeners, I do have a free gift. If that, if you'd like to, I can share that with you guys. Um, I can send that to you. It's a, um, it's just, it's 10 tips to make your money work for you. So if you'd like, um, just like in, you can email me and if you ran, I want to share my, um, my email address and then you can email me on us and over to you. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Thank you All so right. much for having me. It's been great. I really appreciate it. Thank I had you. Fun. Thank you. Did you know that 80% of the agents we speak with got into real estate in order to gain passive income so they could obtain financial freedom and become work optional. If you want to stay up to date, the best way is to make sure you're subscribed. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do it now. We'll catch you on the next episode.